what we're going to talk about right now is planning a trip to Japan or even planning a move here, all right? So I I went through th this whole thing like in a different way because of everything that was set for me so on and so forth. But uh if I had to give if I had to give advice and again, I will be editing this like actually taking this portion and putting it on YouTube it will be oh I forgot I did a complete customization of my Apple GX yeah see and I didn't take all that time to do all that but um I will be making like some edits to it so if you watch it on YouTube it's going to be a lot different than me just sitting here talking to you and everything else so the first thing that I would say that you kind of want to do is probably get some of the basics down as far as the language goes. It's hard for a lot of people to, you know, outright just be able to learn Japanese in any quick form or fashion. It's it's not an easy thing to do. If you grew up, you know, speaking it, so on and so forth, that's one thing. But I can even say this. For me, speaking it as a child and growing up and speaking it, at, you know, throughout different times, but then living away from it for so long, especially, especially even in like some of the places I, I lived and having like Japanese friends and stuff like that, they didn't speak it. And so it's like you're away from it so long, you, it kind of deteriorates in your mind. What I will say, so before I even moved out here, I was at um, <clears throat> the bar that uh, I would hang out at all the time, everything else. And the girl that I see uh, from there, she's a Korean girl. And so I would teach her uh, some Japanese and stuff like that. She'd also help me get better in Korean. And then the Japanese guy showed up one night and we just got into a conversation and it like kind of just flowed so easily for me at that point. I'm like, huh, I haven't, I haven't lost this bad as I actually thought. But, but moving back here, it's like, I'm good, I'm perfectly fine. I have my, the conversational portion of it, even like portions of like, the, you know, in a business sense and everything else. But then I see so many people who are here who have none of the language down. I mean, maybe, maybe they'll get, konnichiwa, maybe they'll get that, you know, but, but it's like, since it's not something that they're used to doing, they still will typically almost go directly into English. So the first thing I would say is at least get some basics down. And the basics I would say that you need to get down is knowing how to say hello and when to use the proper hello. There's one for morning, there's one for afternoon, and there's one for evening. And you don't know, you don't have to be super formal. It's one of those things where especially if you're in Tokyo, you can get away with a lot of the, the informalities because of the fact that, I mean, people understand more than likely you're a foreigner. It is what it is. That's okay. Then beyond that is, I would say, food. Like, you need to understand how to order food, and you also need to understand how to count. The basic counting, the basic counting structure, at least up to 100, which 100 is hyaku. And if you want to say 200, it's nihyaku. And if you want to say 200 yen, as in, like, let's take that as dollars, nihyaku yen. So that right there. And then, of course, going into thousands and ten thousand, stuff like that. If you learn the primary base of it, you're okay. Not just that, but also when you shop a lot of places, especially if they know that you're a foreigner, they will actually write down how much something costs for you so if you don't understand them saying it to you or you'll of course also have uh let's say in like supermarkets and stuff like that there's a uh there's a digital there's a digital screen but then beware if you're outside of main you know big cities or any of the 23 wards of tokyo and then places like uh osaka and things like that you will run into in the more rural areas where a lot of them just do not speak English at all or any other language for that matter. 
They'll still try and they'll still try and function with you, but it's not something that's a commonality for them. Uh, other than that, the next thing, as far as like language-wise, I would say would be, mm, you know, really, I, I think. Those are the primary things. And, of course, like certain pleasantries in how to say excuse me or uh, thank you or you're welcome, like those types of pleasantries, get it down. And understand that certain things uh, like um, when you walk into a restaurant or, or whatever, you, you're almost always going to hear, or any store location for that matter, it say. like people are going to scream that at you Anime has prepared me for that. <laughs> Yo, hey, listen. <laughs> you 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 gotta understand too that in some some cases, I mean anime works. It will work. In some cases though, there's like slang that's thrown in there because it is, you know, it is anime and it's it is what it is. But it does work. Certain films, stuff like that. And I know it's hard for people to keep up if it's a, a situation where, <clears throat> you know, they're trying to read the read the uh, subtitles and listen to the language at the same time. And then since it's such a foreign thing to them, it's one of those things where it's like, are they really listening and understanding what's being said? It's just a baseline understanding. Exactly. And that baseline understanding works. What I will say is that if you try and uh, practice it, so, okay, the written structure is katakana, hiragana, and kanji. Kanji is implemented into the Japanese language, even though, or into the Japanese written structure, even though it's a Chinese thing, okay? It's implemented in there for a reason. I won't go into the history. I do know the history. I could explain the full history of why, the whole story behind it, but it's unnecessary. What I will say is if you get some of the base, the base stuff of uh, of kanji down, like in each kanji character, it can mean multiple things. But there's a base character built into those characters that if you know the baseline of it, you're pretty much good. Katakana, get it down somewhat because you're going to see that more than likely than anything. And again, places do have like English written in places, uh, English menus, so on and so forth. You can get all of that. But if you plan on kind of submerging yourself into the, the culture and the lifestyle and everything else, especially if you're moving here, it's one thing to be coming to visit and everything else. But if you're planning on moving here, it is important that you get some of this stuff down. And then hiragana is like it's another kana, but... It's more so used for uh, foreign words, words that technically did not exist in the Japanese language at all. You know, and it, I mean, you can take that a lot of times with like names. It'll you'll end up having it written in hiragana instead of in you know katakana, though some can be written that way. Certain things like cheese, cheesy, it's typically written in hiragana versus katakana, and then uh, the other part to that. I mean, I, really, that's it. You, If you get, like, some of the basics down, you're fine. What I will say, there is a way to cheat the system. So this is going into certain, like, I'll give you an idea of what you should know and what you can do or what you should do, and then a way to cheat the system. One of those ways to cheat the system, listen, you have a couple of different apps you can use. And one of the better ones for this purpose surprisingly would probably be google translate and the reason i say it's one of the better ones is because number one it's free as long as you have uh data you're good now the reason i say use translate is this not only can you do conversation not only can you uh you know do it like sentence by sentence word by word but like full-on conversations which it does mess up at times but what you'll find is that here and I've seen them do it a lot of the the people who don't necessarily speak English 
Understand this. Again, I'll say this again. People here, a lot more people speak English than what you think, but they are afraid to speak English because they don't want to mess up. They don't want to feel stupid. They don't want to look stupid. You know, whatever. It, 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 like, it can give a person a form of anxiety just as much for you if you, you know, have a portion of the Japanese language down, you will get anxious those first few times where you're talking to people and feeling like you're messing up. Don't let that happen to you and don't let it derail you from actually attempting to do it. If you mess up, you mess up, it's fine, you'll get better. But I've seen them actually use with, um, so when I was at the, the hotel I was at initially, the front desk, one woman, she spoke damn near perfect English. She spoke damn near perfect English. The, there was two other uh, women. They did, but you could tell when they were kind of, hey, what's going on, Dari? What uh, would you say that, Nina? I hate this about this touchscreen freaking thing. It's like if I make a mistake and touch too many places, the screen just doesn't want to act right. Hang on. Let's see. Let me try and pull up this. Oh, I see why it's doing that, too. Whoopsie. Kind of my stupid fault. Uh, I've done that to Japanese men. Oh, use like some of the stuff that, you know, he was pretty comfortable practicing English. Yeah, exactly. Exactly. And that's the thing. You'll even like if you if you do it right, you'll end up meeting people who want to hang out with you in order to like practice their English and everything else and bond and like you'll form like really good friendships and everything else. I mean, it's usually more and that also depends on your personality as well. But what I was saying was, you know, I saw them, they used it for <clears throat> some of the people who came who either spoke English or if they spoke, you know, other languages as well. You're taking 45 minutes. <laughs> Yo, and not what we're talking about. That's the thing. What we're, We've been talking about like a lot of different stuff. And right now I'm kind of giving people uh, a way to or uh, like the top things they probably want to know or do before either planning a trip out to Japan or moving to Japan. After he and I were cool, next thing I knew, he bought like three other guys to meet me and my husband. Exactly. That's what happens. That's exactly what happens. You end up forming groups. And then because of the fact that you were so willing to do that, it was, it was a very respectful thing to him. You know, and then to bring more people into it just says that they, you built some kind of rapport with them. You built some kind of trust with them. So I it, that is that is pretty damn awesome. And that's the thing here. So yeah, like I was saying, they were using it for like, you know, a lot of Chinese people come, especially, you know, uh, to this area or whatnot. They'll come, Koreans, everything else. So you'll see them using Translate. But the other part of Translate is this. There's a a, a section where you can actually use the camera to translate either a picture you may have saved or to translate on the go. So if you're in a, in a restaurant that has no English menu <laughs> and you have, there's no pictures either, and you have no idea what the hell is on that menu or you're standing outside because a lot of places you'll see the menus outside too. You can actually pull up your camera and it'll read off everything that's there. He and I are on Facebook and from time to time he'll message me to check up on us to give us an update on his life with his family. That is cool as hell. See right there. Is he in is he in uh Japan or did he is he still in the States somewhere moved? Like that right there. You you just you literally through language, that's what I mean too. Being able to speak a language and that's why I'm enjoying like teaching uh, language is because of this. To me, language opens up an entire new world for you. It actually can immerse you. Yeah, he's home, back home in Japan. I can almost bet that if you talk to him and say that you were planning a trip to come out of you and your husband were planning a trip, they would either A, have you uh, more than likely uh, say that you could stay with them or give you places near that you know you would be comfortable in uh, in staying at. 
Like, I can almost guarantee you that because you built that kind of a bond with them. But yeah, language can open up so much. Now, what I was going to say is, so with that, uh, with the app, <clears throat> with Translate, the camera section, so I mean, you could be outside and actually pull up everything on the menu so you know before you even go inside as to what you're ordering. And so it is very, very helpful. There's also another uh, uh, app that does the same thing, but they do want some form of subscription. They'll allow you to use it for free, I think, here and there. Um, I think you get like three still images or three pictures a day free, which if you're out traveling around throughout Tokyo and uh, or other areas and stuff like that, especially in areas where a lot less people speak English, you will want to use Translate, which then kind of brings it to the, the aspect of your phone. Before you get here, talk to whatever phone company you have and find out about your international plan. Not just that, but what you'll find is that while you're here, you'll use more data than anything. And as soon as you get in, uh, depending on if you're going through Haneda or Narita, both of them should have this, but there's going to be when you can go and uh, actually train, uh, uh, exchange your money for yen, whatever, whatever country you're coming from, when you go to exchange for yen, right down the way, usually I uh, in which one did I, did I land in Haneda or Narita? Like this is blowing my mind. Uh, I landed in Haneda. So when you go through customs and everything else, when you come out, Facing like uh, after you do baggage claim, you walk out to the left is where the money exchange is. All right, you go ahead and you can do your money exchange, and then if you turn walking away from uh, money exchange, you're again turning left again, and you go straight on the right hand side. There's a bunch of like mobile mobile uh, phone stores, and what they do there, if you are a resident if you have a residence card if you have a um, work visa uh, an extended you know extended visa stuff like that you can actually swap out and go ahead and get a Japanese number right then and there or you can get a mobile data box that mobile data box you spend whatever amount it is and for 30 days or whatever time period you uh, set it for it gives you unlimited data. You carry that thing around with you in your pocket, in your purse, whatever the case may be, and you just charge it when you're back wherever you are. So that way you have data on you and you never run into a problem to where your phone doesn't work or you might be out of uh, mobile data. And a lot of the restaurants and then Tokyo in and of itself has free Wi-Fi spots everywhere. But in order just to kind of alleviate that, if you can get a Japanese phone plan, do so. If not, go ahead and do the mobile data uh, uh, situation right at the airport. And you can actually take those boxes and upgrade them or uh, exchange them pretty much at any mobile shop that works with them. All right, so that's one thing there. Next up would be planning the trip. All right, your flight, depending on, you know, where it is you're leaving from, when you're leaving, everything else, depending on if you're doing, um, uh, you know, just a holiday or vacation versus moving, okay? There's a, there's a website, and you know what? I'll go ahead and I think I have this uh, up right now somewhere, too, and I'll show you. Depending on where you're leaving from, all right? Hopefully you guys can see the screen. But if you're leaving in, from places like Hawaii, oh, there you go. So these are all the places they have available. Honolulu, Tokyo, Seoul, uh, Manila, Bangkok, Singapore, Vancouver, San Francisco, San Jose, and Los Angeles. You can use this company right here, and it's called Zip Air. Listen. None of this is sponsored. I'm doing this just to give you guys information, whatever. Do I say use Zip Air? If you want to, go ahead. But I'm going to give you another option right after I show you this, though. 
So in my case, I decided to leave from Los Angeles. I was in Arizona. And so what I did was I looked for uh, a trip through Zip Air, the closest airport to me that they would, you know, fly me out. I could have gone to Honolulu for all I fucking wanted. I could have spent a day or two in Honolulu. But I decided, I'm like, I'm going to spend an entire day in Los Angeles, hang out there, you know, do, do my thing, and then the next morning leave from there. So L.A., select your destination, Tokyo, they only do Narita. And this is how you know I didn't use them because I landed in Haneda. I could have gone through Narita, but I did Haneda for a very specific reason. So search flight, you need uh, certain information when you actually go ahead and book you'll need this certain information oh and and let's say this if you don't have your passport get your damn passport that's like one of the first things you need you choose the uh the amount of people and right now we're just going with one is it going to be uh, i think this is where it asks oh, okay so when now of course the farther out you go the better it is but right now it'll show right here is this i don't did i choose uh damn i don't know if i chose one way or outbound outbound flout god damn it i have to go back one this is what i was looking for i was like did i get to choose whether it was one way i think it's automatically presuming one way god damn it my bad I just jumped right into this. Okay, round trip. Oh, no, that was round trip. Holy shit. That was round trip. All right. So, yeah. So, one person. Let's go Let's go with two because a lot of people are going to be traveling with two. All right. Of course, you get your date. And the farther out you, you actually plan this, the better it is. So right now, leaving, wait, why did, okay, I'm guessing that's per person. So right now, if you were to leave tomorrow from Los Angeles, round trip, $507. Let's go a little farther down, because most people want to plan like three months out in advance, something like that. So what I will tell you too, and if you don't know this about traveling, Tuesdays, Tuesdays and Wednesdays are usually cheaper flights. That, and that's it most air, uh, with most airlines and everything else. But right here, the 23rd of April, $357.30 round trip. Now, of course, I know you're saying, but I got to take a flight from L.A. If you live close to L.A., you can drive to L.A. You can get a flight to L.A. That's only going to cost you like 60, 70 bucks, something like that. Your one night stay. For me, I'm not even kidding. I planned this out so perfectly. I had a, a one way, <clears throat> one way, and I even got my ticket later. I didn't do it through Zip Air. I'll, I'll explain that in a minute. But I had a one way ticket. It was three hundred, <laughs> three hundred fucking dollars. All right, for a one shot, no layover. Every flight on this here too is one shot. There's no layover. 12 hours was my flight, and actually we did it in less time. I don't know. The, pli the pilots was up there, like, doing a thug fizzle. I mean, we got there. It was like 11 hours, a little, just barely over 11 hours. But um, so I got the flight to L.A. It was only like 50 some, 50 some bucks. And then my stay, because of when I booked it, was dirt cheap. All in all, I spent about 100 bucks. For the flight to LA, the stay overnight, then as far as food and stuff like that, yeah, I went out and ate. I, I was like, I was good, like whatever. Then my flight here was only, so I mean, in total, 400, like 400 bucks. I could have done it first class for like 700. No bullshit. First class. Because they even give you an option on here, whether you're doing standard or, uh, or first class. And of course, the farther out you go, no full uh full flat you know what i'm not even going into that but yeah you have that option as well so 
that's one thing. And if you're going from any of those, uh, from any of those cities, it, it's a no-brainer. Now, if you want, you can use a different service. For me, what I did was I actually used. Uh, I'm not. I'm not saying the name. I used a different company. All right, and that company, uh, uh, online website. You pretty much saying I have no excuse on why I can't take a trip. Exactly. That that is that is pretty much what I'm saying. That is pretty much what I'm saying. So I did it through an online website. I set up my flight, which I actually didn't even do zip air. What's going on, Straps? How you doing? I didn't even do zip air. I did um, American. I got American Airlines. Straight shot here. All right? And uh, I think they, at that point, the it's one of their subsidiaries, so like American Eagle, something like that. Straight shot here. 300 and some change. And then I set up my uh, hotel at that point too which was surprisingly inexpensive for that period so what i would say though is this don't even get a hotel if you're coming here if you're coming here only for like a few days maybe a couple weeks okay do a hotel and i would even advise you to try and get uh, a hotel, uh, a room at a place called Smile Hotel. If you're in Asakusa, they're amazing. There's other Smile Hotels throughout, but, but I mean, do what's good for you. Like for me, being that it was just me, that room was fucking perfect for me. If you need a little bit more space, you can do that. But a lot of people are trying to be on some kind of a budget when they actually come out here. So I would advise you to look for what fits you best. You can do hostels and things like that. You can do capsules. And I would say if you want to experience it, do capsules for a couple of nights, but have a room set up in the area that you're going to be staying in after those couple of nights. You don't want to stay in capsules for long periods of time. Some people do because it is very, very budget friendly. I'm talking it's like 20 some odd bucks a night. So I can crash at your plate. Hey, yo, yeah, listen, my new place, like once I move in there, no, I'm serious. I'll have the space. You and your husband can, yeah, you guys would be good. I'll have the extra room. So, yeah, um, but capsules and stuff like that, they're very, very budget friendly. So is like a hostel. The catch to most of the, a uh, lot of those places, I mean, you're going to be sharing bathroom with, you know, other people, so on and so forth, which is not that big of a deal. And then, more than likely, you may not have a shower there. But guess what? That's what onsens and like uh, bathhouses are for, right there. Another experience you don't want to miss out on. But so my hotel room, though, it had bath, shower, my toilet, wipe my ass, and clean my ass for me as well. <laughs> like it was the whole the whole nine. The catch to it was, I mean, even for my like. I was too tall for that bathtub, but I'm not going to lie. I did jump in that bitch a couple of nights after being out and walking around and like doing so much, especially at the first couple of days. It's like, even if you work out on a regular basis, what you will find is when you're here and you're out walking and like doing all the stuff, you don't realize how much you're moving, how much activity you're actually putting on your body. And by the end of the night, it's like, what is wrong with my legs and my calves? Hot bath. Absolutely best thing you'll ever do. And so that's why, again, onsens and, um, and bathhouses are fantastic for that. Now, do be careful if you have tattoos. In my case, I actually found an onsen and bathhouse, uh, you know, two different spots where they don't give a damn. They're like, it's perfectly fine. I was like, bet, bet. Normally, I would have to do like private, uh, private places, whatever, or you can also do like hotel rooms and stuff like that that have onsen, uh, an onsen built into it. We have both tats. We both have tats, though. You're fine. You're fine. Depending on where you are, I will say that there are some areas that are going to be like, no, absolutely not. 
But if you're in Tokyo, a lot of places will accept it. And I mean, you you can go in and just ask, you know, if you if you're worried about it. That's my next thing. If you do that, if you do go to an onsen or and we can pull the America. No, you no, you can't. I don't give a fuck. <laughs> you pull the American card, they'll be like, and? And what? <laughs> but if you do go to an uh, onsen or bathhouse, something like that, learn the proper etiquette. Bathhouse, like right before you even step inside, before you cross the threshold in, take your shoes off. Usually there's going to be lockers right there that are for your shoes. You put your shoes in that locker. You take the, it's usually a wooden card. Some of them, the, the must, the more, uh, oh no, I know you are, I'm just saying. But some of the more like uh, newer ones or whatever, they'll have like a key system, but they, a lot of them still use the old wooden card lock system. So you throw those in there and then you walk in, women Dependent, I mean, it's usually a left-right system, but you'll be able to see women to one side, men to the other side. There's very few. There's very few that are um, <clears throat> that are co-ed anymore, but there still are. Hey, straps, thank you for that. Um, I'm just talking to everybody about like what you know things to to do and prepare for before you either visit Japan or move to Japan. But once you go in, then that's where you pay. And then you have the dressing room, go ahead and strip down, then you go inside the main area, grab your bucket and your uh, your seat, sit down, you know, do the shower thing, everything else, you know, scrub yourself really well. You want to take the little things that you need with you, the necessities in like a little bag or whatever, so you soap, your, um, whatever you're using, whether it's a uh, um, sponge or a loofah or a glove, like whatever it is, you're going to do all that, then you get up and you can go ahead and hop into whatever temperature of hot tub you want. And usually it ranges from like super hot. Yeah, I did. I did straps. And if you guys can't see who I'm talking to right now, there's people uh, on YouTube. I'm talking to them. And yeah, you guys on YouTube can see the Twitch chat. But what is that? Oh, I just got a message. But anyway, so yeah, there, there's levels of, you know, the water. So you have like extremely hot to hot to warm to lukewarm. And in some of them, they have like a cold water, a cold water uh, bath as well. Once you're done, you get out. I mean, people spend 45 minutes, an hour, an hour and a half. And then you get out and you shower again, dry off. Go out, like put your stuff away, go out, finish your drying off, get dressed. I've gone to that uh, one specific bathhouse like three different times, the three or four different times now, because even though I can shower here and everything else, it is it's just one of those things to be able to go do that, and I do it before I go out, before I go out out at night too. So I'm like super relaxed. I've got my relax on. And then when I'm done, I'm about to go out and like just drink and hang out, you know, do all kinds of stuff. But anyway, so yeah, what I was going to say is this. If you are doing more than a couple of weeks, do not get a hotel. Don't do it to yourself. If you're staying for a month, two months, if you have a um, just a, uh, a tourist visa, then you have three months here at max before you have to go back and then you can come back again. If you're doing that, get a monthly apartment before you even come here. Just do it. I will actually, like this portion of the video, this is why I'm saying that video is going to get edited for YouTube. I will put up a couple of websites, even put it in the description, the places that you can look for monthly places, and they're going to be specifically for Asakusa, but you can, in that search, find if you're going to, be, most people are going to be staying in one of the 23 wards of Tokyo, so you'll be able to find different areas, whether it's uh, Shinjuku or Shibuya or Ikebukuro or... Um, 
uh, Akihabara, whatever. You'll be able to look for places in those areas. And I can tell you right now, you for a month, you're going to spend on a monthly rental somewhere within the range of 80,000 upwards to 180,000 yen for the month. All right. But realize this. You don't have to pay the extra cost that you would actually usually have to uh, pay in a hotel. You're going to be in an apartment. You're going to be in a full-size apartment. They're more than likely going to be furnished. You'll have internet access, like all of those things already set up for you. You'll be good. Now, that's the smarter way to go with that. The money you should actually bring, I would say, come with dependent. Um, there's smart ways to do things. I would say easily three grand, maybe four, all right? The reason I say that is because people always want to exceed. I mean, you could come here with two grand and be perfectly fine, perfectly fine for, for like a, a month to two months, perfectly fine. But people like to spend money while they're here. There's so many places to go shopping. There's so many different places to go eat. And then I know a lot of people, the one thing that they do, they fall into a trap. And this is kind of my next point. They fall into the tourist, the tourist trap where they go to all the places that have the big signs and the, the food, like, you know, in the pictures, so on and so forth. The stuff costs more than what it would cost for you to actually, whatever area you're in, walk down the alleyways where you'll find even better tasting food at better fucking prices. And then going only for anime merch, exactly. Nina, yeah. You in in uh, Akihabara, you're going to lose your shit. Even here in Asakusa, the places where, you know, I, uh, I know that they have like anime merch and different stuff like that are insane. But the food, like you're going to try the food, merch and snacks. That's what I was going to say. You're going to try the foods and you're going to want to go to like the different cafes that have all the random snacks and, you know, desserts and different stuff like that. But I would say, yeah, you know, with even for two people, come with like three to four racks, three to four racks. If you can do more, do more. You're not really going to. But then, of course, like, you know, you might want to go to uh, Harajuku and buy a lot of, um, like different clothing and stuff, the sites will be the bonus. Exactly. And that's the big thing. Shopping here is not that expensive if you're smart about it. It's not at all. You can bring two grand, three grand between two people and come out here and have a blast. But then, of course, like people like to go and do um, uh, uh, the, uh, uh, the Tepan places or Kobe places and stuff like that. And you're spending like 10,000 yen out the off the rip per person in one of those places but then as far as like you're eating you can go out and eat and i'm telling you i almost i mean considering what's been going on here i kind of want to put out like a, a challenge uh uh eating with a thousand yen a day just to prove it can be done and mind you a thousand yen less than 10 bucks all right less than 10 bucks I want to give it the actual cost, and I could be slightly off on this. It's about seven and some change, maybe eight bucks, something like that. So if any of you saw the, I put out a video a couple of days ago where I went out and I had um, uh, katsu. I had full ass meal, full meal. It was exactly five dollars American. It was huge slice of uh, chicken katsu, miso, green onions, and a large lump of cabbage behind it with a nice big bowl of rice as well as a big ass bowl of miso soup. And then they gave you uh, green tea as part, of, as part of the meal. Like right when you walk in, they'll either walk up and give you water or, uh, or tea. And that was it. It cost me $5 American. The bowl of ramen I had the day before that was five dollars and 32 cents us dollars which in the us going out to get ramen like that man that, that's twenty dollars off the rip and it take it was one of the best ramens i've ever had in my life five bucks five dollars and 32 cents insane 
And then got gyoza with it too, and that was only like a dollar and some change, six gyoza. And how much, like, if you get an appetizer of uh, gyoza in the States, if I remember correctly, and especially if you're doing like pork, you know, everything, you're spending like seven, eight bucks on that. Here, it's like a dollar, two dollars at max. It's nuts. So that's why I say if you come with a couple thousand dollars, you're in good. You're in good for that state. But I would advise, yeah, if you stay for a month or longer, get an actual uh, monthly rental here. Okay, next up, I mean, it kind of goes into what I was already talking about, eating. Don't fall into the traps. Do not fall into a lot of the traps. And a lot of those traps would be the overpriced places where you see a ton of tourists go. You're going to try some of them. There's no doubt about that. But don't do it every day. Technically, you could eat three times a day. I mean, honestly, for a thousand yen, maybe I would say two thousand yen per per person. All right. Here's why I say that. So, first off, breakfast. It's not that expensive of a meal, especially if you get up in time to go to certain places where you can get like a whole, uh, so here a meal is called a set or set though. So you go in and you order a meal set that might cost you somewhere around 400, 500 yen, something like that. There are places that it's going to be a little bit more, but the smarter thing would be to go to a place called Maruetsu. And I will be putting an image of a Maruetsu up and a lot of them are like markets. You'll find Maruetsus throughout most of Tokyo. You'll find um, kombinis throughout all of <laughs> all of Japan, whether it's a 7-Eleven or a Lawson. You can go into one of those places, and they already have like uh, tamango, like ready, or uh, egg, like a um, omelet. So most of you have probably seen it, like the rolled egg omelet that's sliced down, and it's 100 to 200 freaking yen that right there as part of your breakfast get a marupan, uh, a marupan a melon bread and you've got breakfast or a piece of toast and you've got breakfast you can go to a lot of the cafes breakfast here seriously is like a slice of toast with jam of some sort and you got to think about this the bread's like that damn thick all right so a slice of toast with coffee stuff like that you can do a full breakfast everything else for a very low cost you can go out and do the whole like you know what i'm i'm living it up so the uh matcha green tea pancake that i had the souffle pancake where i was at that restaurant and you guys probably saw because i uploaded it on a, a short on i think every platform and i know on ig there's a picture of it the souffle souffle pancake was like this big it had uh, a whipped cream that also had a uh, cream cheese mixed into it it came with matcha the matcha green tea sauce as well as matcha ice cream uh hazelnut and then um candied black uh black beans just that by itself was only like 550 yen for the single one that's it that's it i mean honestly that was enough with a drink for breakfast and you just go from that point i'm happy with just red bean buns hey exactly that right there you can get those you can get those at so many places you can get them in lawson you can get them in um in uh seven as well so then lunch lunch of course you can pick up stuff from a uh a um uh, a maruetsu something like that and i'll tell you like this right here, not even joking, not even joking. The the brand it's made by Nissan, but the brand is uh so it's it's like Craftsman it's, it's Craftsman uh Craftsman noodles, and it's a chicken broth. This thing has a little packet of um of a, of sauce. It has like um fish cake in it as well as um your uh 
oh my god the word i'm looking for here you got seaweed stuff like that in there and then i had like a little um yeah it, it sounds good but let me say this that's like one of my favorite store-bought ramens right there it is the, for an instant ramen, that is insane insanely good and then uh i also had um egg i had egg with it that enough for lunch right there because then i know at dinner i'm gonna eat i'm gonna eat and i mean you can do anything you want you could go down to a, a, a menchikatsu place and get that as lunch one of those will do you right for lunch but then dinner you go actually eat eat and again you're gonna spend anywhere from i mean a bowl of ramen a really good bowl of ramen can range you anywhere from huh, 600 to 1100 yen that's the cost of it right there now again the other thing you can do especially if you're in a monthly place you can cook there all right go shop for groceries for a few days you'll spend a couple thousand yen for like three <laughs> three days worth of groceries it's it can be done so you don't need a whole lot of money to do so but if you want to go out and have um you know exp like slightly expensive meals you can still get away get away with it for about 11 to 1500 yen per person every single yo know, every day at least one meal being that cost and again you'll still be fine with like two racks being here for a month or two uh the other part of that uh, what else what else would i say as far oh okay if you are trying to do an extended stay and this probably should have been one of the first things if you're trying to do an extended stay or move here and you don't have citizenship then you need to make sure that you get everything taken care of with your consulate there or they handle visas all right you can get a tourist visa like i said that's a three month stay you can get an extended visa which can be for a year two years or five years and of course you can do student visas and the student visas you know while you're in school there's two different types there's one that you can actually stay as long as you take courses during the summer uh, even like part-time courses and stuff like that during the summer mm -hmm. and then the, the other where you have to leave during summer but then you come back and go ahead and you're good now for people from Europe they have something called a working holiday visa and this is what's crazy it amazes me that the US doesn't have something like this so essentially they can come on this form of a holiday visa and stay for six months zero problem no thought about it they don't have to be working it's just fuck it you're here it, you're good whatever go for it it's like wait what but the u.s they, it's three months max unless you're doing something else now with the working visa if you're with a company that's transferring you here or you have a company here that's willing to sponsor you then they can sponsor you for a year two years or whatever the case and then you can work towards permanent residence here the other type would be uh if you have a certain skill set we're talking like if you're a photographer if you're a journalist if you're an online if you're an entertainer and entertainer is kind of a broad spectrum too and Hell, you can get away with online entertainer and different things like that as well. Uh, online personalities. You can get extended stay visas for two years or more and even work towards residency. Expect, like photographers and things like that and chefs, bruh. Like here, they're, like chefs are needed. They are very much so needed. If you have uh, culinary degrees, things like that, you could technically come here and have a permanent stay form of visa 
because of that specialized skills. Engineers, like all sorts of stuff. Now, if a job is going to sponsor you, they'll get all the paperwork done and stuff like that before you even get here, and bam, you're good. Just the same as school. So those are the different types of uh, visas. you got to figure out what you're going to be doing. If you're just coming on holiday, then that's simple. If you're from the U.S., you got three months. If you're from the U.K. and, a, and certain other countries, you got at least six months, maybe even a year in certain cases, that you could just stay and you're good. Um, beyond that, I mean, those are the primary things. I've been talking about this for a minute. I can go into so much more, but I would say those are the primary things that you need to know if you're planning a trip or planning to move to Japan. I mean, hey, feel free to ask you know, any questions in comments or right now in chat. And uh, yeah, we'll go from there. But I don't know. So to the question that I got asked, 